Hello and welcome to a presentation of all the new features of VCAF Pro version 9.5. Before we move on to individual demonstrations, let's take a summary look at all the new features that have been added. As you can see, VCAF Pro contains the majority of features that have been developed for version 9.5 and are broadly grouped into key areas such as infrastructure, job type drawing, modeling and machining, and we've got a good spread of improvements across all these key areas whether that be the automatic download and entering of your license code to get your software working, the addition of a completely new job type for Rotary, some significant improvements to text creation and editing within drawing as well as the new picture editor and the ability to crop a bitmap to a vector, some significant improvements to the way we import Rotary models and the ability to export that wrapped entity as a true wrapped model, um, some significant improvements to the way we work with rotary based machining as well as the new support for helical ramps. As part of our expansion of cloud based services we've introduced the ability to automatically download and enter your registered username and license code in order to get your software working. Now previously with version 9.5 at worst you'd have to manually type in that registered username and license code or at best be able to copy and paste that from an email you may have received. However, with version 9.5, when connected to your customer account, VNCO, the license can be automatically downloaded in order to get your software working. If you don't have internet connection, you can still use the manual typed option. So with that, let's start a session of the software. And immediately you will get this message, as this is the first time we started it. Do I want to enter my details through online or manual entry? So I'm going to go online. I'll then be prompted to log in to my VNCO account. This will direct to portal.vetri.com login page. I'm going to enter my email address and the password, which I created when I accepted the invitation to the account. And once I've directed in now, so that's validated that. I then will get the message pop up on the screen that the software has been licensed to Joe Blogs Vetric, which is my registered username, and hit the finish button and my software starts. In version 9.5 we significantly improved the way we manage our clip art. In version 9 you'd have to install the clip art directly from the installation script contained on your USB stick or alternatively each of the separate executables from your VNCO account. In both cases this would take considerable time and use up a lot of disk space. However, with version 9.5 if you don't install all the clip art you'll still be presented with all that's available and you can download those items as and when required. And of course this has future scope to link across to purchasable uh, clip art from our sister company Design and Make. If we look at some visual comparisons here, in version 9 you can see that you can install the clip art directly from the installation script on the USB stick or alternatively each of the separate executables from your VNCO account. But once again both in both cases can take considerable time and a considerable disk space. In version 9.5 you'll still be presented with all the available clip art and you can download it as and when required. So with that, let's show that how that works. So I'm just going to start a session of the software now and a new file and go straight to my clip art and go down for instance to objects and people here and I'm presented with the available clip art in this section. Some items have already been downloaded. You can see that because there is no download icon in the bottom right hand corner whereas the ones below that bottle cap you can see there is a download icon in the bottom right hand corner showing that it needs to be downloaded before it can be used. So with that now I can right mouse key and go download okay it will ask me to log in to my VNCO account so I'm going to get the uh, portal.vetric login page will come up and I'm going to log in now with my uh, email address and my password and sign in okay that's linked across now so with that, that item has now been downloaded and I can simply move that into the part space. Or alternatively now, if I've already connected, I can just simply paste that across and it will download 
and get pasted into the job at the same time. If I close the software now and restart it, so my connection is still there, so if I go now to start another part and introduce more clip art, for instance I'm now going to add in these uh, flowers, it won't prompt me it would also automatically download and import because I'm already connected to my VNCO account. The biggest changes to version 9.5 have certainly come within the world of rotary jobs. In version 9 this was a gadget only function and it made it very difficult to make job modifications once you've created the initial setup and you had no ability to sort of combine spiral and cylindrical wrap layouts in one job by the nature of the form selecting either one or the other. In version 9.5 uh, you no longer require a gadget for the job setup. There's a new dedicated workflow, so a new job type. Um, it's far easier to, uh, to edit job parameters after the initial creation, as you can just return back to the form. You can combine spiral and cylindrical layouts within the same job. And of course, we have made sure that those jobs created with the gadget can be reopened within the new um, job layout. Okay, so. If we move through to look at some visual differences between V9 and V9.5, you can see on the left-hand side there is only two types of job types, single-sided and double-sided. There is no um, rotary. That rotary was only accessible through a gadget menu. So from the top menu, gadgets, wrapping, wrap job setup, which would then bring up this form we see here. We are specifying the length, diameter, um, uh, the rotation axis and whether you want either a cylindrical wrap or a spiral wrap, not a combination of both. In uh, version 9.5 you can see that we have a new job type, that rotary that's been added underneath the single sided and double sided and on pond selection you get dedicated parameters for a rotary job setup. So the length there, the diameter of the stock, uh, whether your zero position is on the top of the stock or in the central axis, uh, the same XY datum position, you've got this orientation as to whether you are uh, orientated along the X axis, therefore wrapping the Y values, or along the Y axis, wrapping the X values. So this is a new form here and a new job type. Okay, I mentioned uh, also about the ability to combine spiral and uh, cylindrical jobs together. You can see in version 9 you either selected a cylindrical wrap or a spiral wrap, but in um, the new version here you can uh, everything is a cylindrical wrap, but you have the option to, uh, for a dedicated level, to be able to switch on wrapping, so you can take a simple sort of unwrapped relief and then obviously multiple wrap it round in this case uh, creating a very simple sort of uh, lamp stand where the lower half is a wrapped relief and the upper half is a standard fluting toolpath so there we have a job that combines both of those in terms of display there's been some huge changes too um, in uh, vCarve Pro you could not view the wrapped relief for 2D jobs and you cannot view the wrapped simulation. The only thing you could visualize is the wrapped toolpath. So it meant there was sort of visual disparity between the simulation and the toolpath. Um, also when wrapping that toolpath the seam would appear facing you rather than the center of the workpiece therefore quite often you had to try and rotate the model back in order to be able to see the toolpath which made it you know not particularly easy to work with and you couldn't visualize the model inside the cylindrical stop you could only see the block uh, as if the item was unwrapped rather than the wrapped cylindrical stop in version 9.5 you can view the wrap relief for 2D jobs and you can view the wrapped toolpath simulation. So you've got all three things there, the wrap relief itself, the wrapped simulation and the wrapped toolpath. And it will automatically wrap that relief for a rotary job. You've got new dedicated icons on the top toolbar to be able to switch wrapping on and off rather than accessing through the uh, toolpath drawing option. You can, uh, as stated, you can open jobs that have previously been created with gadgets in 
previous versions and when creating um, uh, for instance some text in the center of a piece uh, when that's wrapped the center of the workpiece will be facing you on the screen rather than the seam so it makes far better sense to see the center of the job facing you and of course since we're able to uh, see the cylindrical stock it makes it far easier to visualize this around the component that you're actually working with we're going to take a look at a couple of different examples this is one we're simply going to do here which is to put some vectric text on a block if we look to what happens in version 9 on the left hand side you can see that when we go to wrap the toolpath we can see that in the second of the two images on the left hand side we see that wrapped uh, relief but uh, wrapped toolpath but not the wrapped model and when we do wrap the toolpath we are looking as if we are looking at the seam the wrapped seam so in this case rather than the vectric facing you it seems to be on the back side and of course when you go to simulate it you see the simulation in the flat version with the wrapped toolpath so the sort of disparity between the two However, in 9.5, as soon as you go to create the toolpath here, you'll see that the toolpath is facing you clearly um, in the center of the screen, uh, so not the seam. You have icons to switch off the wrapping. You also have new icons to rotate the stock round to be able to see the other side if required. And you can see here that the simulation and the toolpath are in situ together. We'll also take a look at this example here where we're going to wrap some relief um, around a fairly simple cylinder and in version 9 we can visualize the, um, the relief or the, the clip art um, only in the wrapped toolpath version. So okay so in terms of model we can't see it, the raw toolpath and the simulation so only we have the only option we have is to see the wrapped toolpath whereas in version 9.5 we can see the complete wrapped um, clip art around the uh, cylinder and we can see the wrapped simulation and we can see the wrapped toolpath so it's far easier for us to visualize the complete model to see that in situ to see the block and how it fits with the components themselves and it's just a far better way to work with version 9.5 okay so let's start by taking a look at this first example where we're going to compare version 9 to version 9.5 for creating some very simple text on a cylindrical block so I'm going to start by opening version 9 and we're going to go straight to create a rotary job setup which has to be done through the gadgets so wrapped job setup and this is going to be 20 by 3 and it's going to be orientated on the y-axis and this is standard cylindrical wrap so once that's set I've actually now realized I made a mistake and I need to increase the diameter so it's automatically changed my block size and increased my X to be basically the circumference of my 3 inch block so in order to change that I can't go back to the form I'm going to have to go and open a calculator now and times 5 so that's going to be the new diameter times by pi to give me the circumference which I'm now going to have to copy that into the, the clipboard come across and then basically just paste that value so that has changed that I've now realized having looked at my machine that I want to wrap my Y values around my X axis rather than my X values around Y so I need to come back to the form here and copy that value out from there and swap this over with the Y value so paste and I need to change that to 20 I also need to reset my thickness to be 2.5 as it's now no longer a 3 inch diameter but a 5 inch diameter so lots of things I need to remember here so once that's set, um, then I can now move on and create some text. So I'm going to go to the new draw, uh, the draw text tool and enter the letters of Vectric. Okay, and just apply that to find out where that's going to be placed, and just now move that into the center of the workpiece, and move across to machining. So I'm going to go straight now and create the profile toolpath, okay, and in this case it's going to be a start depth of zero, 
down to a cut depth of 0.1. I'm using a 0.25 inch ball nose and I'll quickly calculate that toolpath. Just going to change the color from steel to a light colored material and we're going to simulate that now. And as you can see, we've got the toolpath in situ with the simulation, but of course we're not seeing this in true wraps. So if I want to try and see what's possible, I have to go up to the toolpath menu, toolpath drawing, wrap the Y values around the X, and there we can see that is the extent of what I'm able to visualize, which is purely the wrapped toolpath. And notice that I'm not looking uh, neatly at the word vectric, which would have been in the center of my workpiece, but I'm actually looking at it as if it's on the back side, so I'd need to rotate it round to something like so in order to be able to see as I would have expected. Okay, so now we're going to look at the same demonstration but in version 9.5. Okay, so we have a new session of VCarve Pro 9.5. I'm going to go straight ahead and create a new file. No need to go to gadgets. Go straight up to my form here and select rotary. Length 20, diameter 3. And I'm going to, just like we did before, set the orientation along the Y axis, so essentially wrapping the X values. Okay, and I'm just going to OK that now. And just like we did with version 9, I want to make some changes to this. I now need to work with a 5 inch diameter rather than 3 inch. Well, that's very, very easy now. I can simply come up to here, change the diameter, and that will dynamically update. And also, I want to change the orientation. I've noticed actually on my machine that the rotation axis is parallel to my x axis, therefore, I want to wrap the y values, and I can simply OK that. Go straight ahead now and add some text. So in this case, you can see the new text tool. So I'm going to enter that somewhere in the middle of the screen. OK, and close that and just center that now. Go straight to machining, straight to the profile. And we're going to use the same thing and calculate. And immediately you see the wrap job and the wrap toolpath on the screen. And I can simulate that now and we can see that all together so that's the wrap job and the toolpath simulation all coming together so it's uh, uh there's been a lot of improvements both in terms of uh, adding in a completely new job type but also the way we work with it in terms of the workflow and the way different items have been displayed so now we're going to move on and look at a different example okay so the next example we're going to look at is a simple wrapping of some clip art around a cylinder and once again in order to highlight the differences we're going to do the same presentation in version 9 and version 9.5 okay so i started a new session of vcarve pro version 9 and I'm going to go straight ahead and create a wrapped job setup in this case uh 20 inch in length five diameter orientated on the x-axis but I'm going for a spiral wrap here okay and the number of revolutions is five so that will then create me um, the job size plus obviously the vector and as long as I wrote uh, I have my clip eye in this region I'll be getting five revolutions okay so with that now I can go straight ahead and start adding my clip art so I'm going to go to the clip art now and go down to the weaves tab and I've always got one that's available here so I'm going to move that across into my workspace and just scale that up to something like so and I'm going to rotate that now using 9 on the keyboard so it's running vertical okay so we're going to rotate that round and just basically orientate that somewhere in the middle of this workspace here and I now need to copy that because I need to make it long enough to wrap round five times so I'm going to just basically using my control key just basically keep copying that up okay might have to do this maybe five times altogether and finally like so what I do need to do is just to make sure they're all in line. So I'm just going to uh, pick the rest of the items there and then align them to the left hand edge. So go down to the drawing and we're going to align, align to left hand edge so they're all into line. And uh, what I need to do is consider them as one piece. So under here I will then group those together. So I'm going to group those objects. Okay. So I now need to rotate them to fall inside the vector here. So this is the vector that's automatically calculated for doing a spiral wrap. 
So I'm just going to rotate that round now. So we're going to like something like so. It's running roughly parallel, and then I'll move it. Okay, so we've got that about right. I'm just going to move that now into the space. Okay, so that looks around about right there. So it doesn't really matter that it's it's coming out the bottom because it's just going to be capped off at the end anyway. So with that, I can look at my 3D view, and we can see those two together. Okay, so that's the wrapped. That's the actual uh, clip art on the top, but of course it's on a flat plane now, so actually we don't have any diameter onto which uh, this uh, is going to be wrapped. So what I need to do now is to create a new level. So I'm going to create a new level, um, and with that level I'm going to, be able to add a plane. OK, so I'm going to add a zero plane to that, but I need to check what height that needs to be. Now, if we remember, the height uh, or the block size is going to be 5 inch diameter, therefore 2.5 inch radius, therefore the thickness of my material needs to be 2.5 or lower. So I'm going to just, to make my life easier, change the height of the relief or the clip art to 0.2. OK. And the zero plane obviously would now need to be 2.5 minus 0.2, which is 2.3. So we have to calculate this in order to create the correct shape. So I'm happy at that point there that I've got something that will wrap correctly and will form the required 5 inch diameter. I'm now going to move across to machining. Okay, um, I'm going to go straight to a 3D finish and in this case 0.25 inch ball, a very simple raster across the part and I will calculate. Okay, so the toolpath has been calculated there and if we have a look along you can see the actual toolpath running over the uh, clip art there. Next we want to um, simulate that, so we're going to simulate it Okay, and what we'd like to see ideally is the wrap model, but all we have at the moment is the toolpath and the simulation. The simulation is flat. If I go up to the toolpath menu, which is the only way to show any wrapped entities, toolpath drawing, and I'm going to wrap the Y values around the X. And so the only thing that we can see is actually the wrapped toolpath there. Okay, we can't see um, a wrapped 3D model, we can't see the wrapped simulation, the only thing we can do is see the wrapped toolpath. So now what we'll do is we'll do exactly the same presentation in version 9.5 to see the improvements. Okay, we have a new session of uh, 9.5 open. I'm going to go straight ahead now and create a new file that's 20 inch and 5 inch diameter. So, I'm now ready to uh, begin in, uh, using the clip up. Before I do so, um, I'm aware that obviously we had the ability to create the special spiral vector uh, to help obviously locate the uh, clip art in version 9. That's currently not available in 9.5, although will be written in in the future. So I would suggest that you output the wrapped output sort of uh, vector uh, from version 9 and then import that into 9.5 which is exactly what I'm going to do here so we've got the wrapped output which came from running the original gadget in V9 I'm now going to go to my clip art go down to the weaves pick out the uh, the one that we used in V9 and it's automatically told me that um, do I want to modify the sort of zero plane so it's automatically going to create the zero plane and modify that so that we're maximizing the amount of stock to fill the five inch diameter so I'm going to go yes on that and immediately if I flip now to the 3D view you can see there's our, uh, our, uh, our clip art that's been added on top and if I actually move across to machining now and have a look at the stock you can see the stock um, and the plane has been calculated to actually allow a little bit of space here for the clip art that's been added but it's maximizing that 5 inch diameter stock so if I then just cancel out of there and we'll go back to the modeling tab so we can see 
and get away from the 3D view. So that's our standard unwrap view. We're going to go back to the 2D now and further manipulate the clip art. So with that I'm going to just change the size, sort of dynamically pick that up and just rotate it round as we did before and quickly then just obviously link this all together. So control and pick that up and once again pick that up. I'm not being particularly careful here since we're just demoing this. And now pick those items together and just link them all. and just make sure they're aligned first so align to the left and then just right mouse key group those objects and you'll notice in the modeling menu that we've also already got the zero plane that's been calculated and added whereas that was a manual process that we had to do with version 9 I'm going to create a new level and move my weave into that level now and just rotate it into position so I'm going to rotate that now roughly into somewhere like so. So I'm happy that that's falling through there. And if I go to my 3D view now, we can see that, okay? And if I'm going to show that as wrapped, it's wrapped round, but not all the way round. So it's just done what it can see basically from the unwrapped state. Okay, whereas actually we'd like to continue this round and round. Well, this is where we've got the option now to uh, set a wrap to a particular level. So I'm going to go and right mouse key over the level now and set this level to be wrapping. So immediately you can see that's wrapped that clipper all the way round now. And as a result, when I go to my fully wrapped view, I get exactly as expected. Okay, so that's quite nice that we can have basically a standard sort of cylindrical wrap but have one level that's dedicated to being a spiral wrap essentially. I can go straight across now to machining and simply you can see then that stock in situ with the model which is great for visualization and I'm going to OK that and come through to the finish machining and quickly calculate a very crude toolpath here so we can see the simulation. So there we are immediately presented with the wrapped toolpath rather than flat toolpath. But of course I can go back to the flat view if required. And we can see that toolpath there. And then come back to the wrapping and now I'm going to simulate. So there you can see very quickly we've been able to get from start to finish in version 9.5 both in terms of an easier workflow, the automatic creation of the zero plane and the calculation of its height based upon the other items that we're adding to it and then of course the automatic wrapping of both the model, the toolpath and the simulation makes working in the rotary space far easier with version 9.5. The final example is to take the model we've just been working with and to modify that to create this sort of lamp stand that we can see on the right hand side. Here we are combining sort of a spiral wrapped clip art uh, during the bottom half of the stand and then combining that with a standard cylindrical fluted layout for the top half with a little band in the middle separating it. So for that we're going to jump into the last session of VCarve Pro 9.5 and modify the part. OK, so we're back inside the last session of VCarve Pro 9.5 with the same part and we're going to make some modifications in order to create the lamp stand that we were looking at on the slides. I don't need this uh, wrapped vector and I'm, before I do anything I'm just going to rotate the original clip art round to roughly vertical and just move that out of the way. Um, now considering the lower half is going to be wrapped and the upper half is going to be a fluted toolpath, I'm just going to create some construction geometry roughly off the middle and coming up vertically okay as so and I now I'm going to expand my uh, clip art. My idea here really is to try and create basically clip art that intertwines on itself so it looks like a complete wrapped relief around it even though essentially it's a spiral that happens to be merging together so I'm just going to come in now and just widen that up okay and I'm now going to rotate that. So I'm going to rotate that like so. And we're just going to move that into position. And basically, I'm going to probably extend that up now. So we've got something like that. And maybe just move it down. 
so I'm pretty happy with that at that point and let's go and have a look at the 3D view now so you can see that that's been updated I might need to just shift it a little bit to the right hand side okay so we'll just, let's just expand that up a little bit and then just move that across okay so we should get quite a nice effect there okay so you can see that's sort of wrapped all the way around there I'm quite pleased with that but I now need to add a sort of a base and a sort of differentiating band towards the top region that we're going to be doing the fluting on so with that I'm going to go back to my clip art now and read in some well actually it's a 3d tab here this circular one so that's going to come in quite small and I'm just going to rotate that now through what a 90 degrees and just expand it I'm going to have it roughly around about that wide and I'm now going to just center that so we'll just center that in the middle of the workpiece and expand that okay so we're gonna just expand that up and to the bottom as well whoops I've just moved that so I just come back and scale that down okay and I'm just gonna go to my modeling tab here and I'm gonna differentiate between the weave and the the sort of circular shapes so I'm just gonna create a new level now and move that circular shape up and I'm going to change the height of that to be 0.3 okay so that's gonna be 0.3 in height and I'm just gonna change the weave now and make sure that is that's fine at point that one six I'll make it actually point one seven five just to round things up and I'm just going to go to the 3d view now and we can see here that's currently wrapping on top that's because the uh, combined mode of my level is not correct so I'm going to set that to merge now okay so that will change that there and what I will do is I'll just slightly expand that bit in the middle so we're just going to take that now and just slightly expand it and I'll just go back to the 3D view and you can see that's taken care of that I'm now going to uh, take the same thing and uh, copy that band down to the bottom so I'm just going to eyeball this this time although I could so I'm going to uh, just with my control key down and the item selected just basically place it somewhere like so and we can have a look at the 3D view now and we've added a base there okay so with that I'm quite happy with the lower half here I've got that sort of quite neat uh, weave that's been added it looks completely tiled but essentially that's just a spiraled uh, bit of clip art that happens to be merging together so the next stage is to go ahead and do the fluting so we're going to go back to the 2D view now okay and I'm going to add in some vectors here so I'm just going to close out the form now we would normally have access to use the fluting gadget in 9.5 which still remains so I'm going to go up to the fluting layout here okay and we want a number of flutes so in this case we're going to go um, five okay and the offset from the start bearing in mind this is 20 inches the middle is 10 11 so maybe around about 11.5 11 11.5 and then of course we want to be an offset from the end of around one inch as well so we'll okay that and that's created the vectors that we see on the screen we don't need these two end ones here and I'm going to select those vectors and we're now going to create a toolpath to form that uh, fluted um, detail at the top of the stand now when I move across to the machining I have to be aware of what the height of the cylinder is in that port in that position now bearing in mind our zero plane automatically adjusts and our maximum clip art height is 0.3 okay we're dealing with if we go back to our block size we can see we're dealing with a 5 inch diameter therefore it's 2.5 radius we've got 0.3 so basically that's 2.2 is the height here so really what we want to do now is when we come to create our fluting toolpath okay so we're going to go to the fluting here and we're going to set the start depth at 0.3 okay so that's 0.3 down bearing in mind our height of our relief is 0.3 and our fluting depth thereafter would be say 0.2 okay we're going to use a large ball nose ball so I'm going to just simply copy this 
quarter inch and just change it to a one inch and the diameter to one and we'll set the depth to say 0.25 and OK that and simply calculate that toolpath now. OK so I'm just going to reset the preview because that was the one that we had from before and just play that so we can immediately see the fluting that has been added. OK, with that, I now need to obviously consider the toolpath for the lower half. So we're going to go back to the, um, we're going to close out from the um, simulation and go into our standard 3D finishing. And once again, I, this isn't going to be particularly efficient because I will be running the tool over the top half as well. So I'm just going to go with my quarter inch ball nose and I'm going to raster and calculate that toolpath. So we'll quickly simulate all the toolpaths now. So there we can see the upper half has the fluted toolpath and then the lower half has the uh, spiral weave separated with a band around the middle and a small base. So it just shows really um, the improvements that have been added to 9.5 which allow us to combine this spiral wrapped layout um, at the lower half with another region that happens to be uh, fluted for instance or could be a different method altogether. For version 9.5 there are significant improvements to the way text is created and edited. If we look back to version 9 you would only ever see the text placed on the screen after completing the entries in the form. There was no dynamic modification so if you're changing for instance the height or the justification then you would need to apply that in order to see the effect on the screen and also tr any transformations to the text would be reset when editing the text content for instance if you'd rotated the text scaled it mirrored it etc and then wanted to make a change those changes were all lost and the text was presented in its original location whereas for 9.5 when you you start by clicking on the screen which will show a text box showing its start position its height and its alignment and the text would begin to be displayed as soon as you enter the first character. So we can see also we have dynamic modification if you're changing the font or the height then that will immediately be updated on the screen without having to apply and most importantly is any transformations to the text are maintained when editing the text content and that applies when rotating the text whether you've wrapped it along a curve whether you've modified its kerning um, also some non-proportional scaling or mirroring that's all maintained if you go ahead and edit that text at a later point okay the best way for us to highlight these improvements is to see both these versions in action so I'm going to start with version 9 and we're going to open an existing job in this case it's a sign for a local rowing club that we will complete later on in the presentation but first let's take a look at some of the current issues we have with the way text is created and edited in version 9 so I'm going to go across to the draw text function and I would expect to click on the screen to be able to enter my start position for the text but of course it's looking for me to create the text first so I'm going to come back up and in this case I'm going to enter the word canoe and then I hit the apply on the form to find out where that's going to be located and in this case I may want to uh, move that into a more suitable location now following on from that I actually want to create um, uh, shorter height letters but the same width so I'm going to just scale that down and I'm happy with that but I want to actually change the word from canoe to canoeing so I'm just going to simply add on the letters ing and apply on the form but of course you can see that the scaling has been reset keep maintaining the height but obviously losing um, the disproportional scaling that we had. Similarly, um, you notice here there is no way for me to rotate the text even though I'm in the transform stage. So I need to close out the form, come back, click on the actual word, rotate it, OK? And now let's, for instance, I wanted to change it from canoeing to kayaking. So I come back into the form and simply change those letters to kayak and apply and once again it's reset that action so there are a number of different 
um, editing functions that are basically um, completely ignored if you come back and modify the text. And this also applies, for instance, to um, if I'm doing any kerning, therefore I maybe wanted to change the distance between some of the uh, letters. OK, and then if I come back into the form and change the back to canoeing, so I'm just going to come back in and change to canoe and apply, then of course I've lost the kerning that I had before. So with that, let's take a look at the sign itself. OK, so I'm just going to delete that out. And this essentially is going to be Salisbury Rowing Association. So the Salisbury is written in here, rowing, and then association, and then some dates at the top. OK, so first of all, I'm going to come in and create some text for the rowing. So once again, I would expect to come in here and click, but of course I can't. I'm simply going to enter rowing and apply and find out where it's been located. OK. So I need to change the height to be 1 and apply. And I could actually just dynamically locate this, but a good way to position it is to select the vector with which you want to center it within. Go to the Align Selected Objects function and center the text within the outer vector. So I'm happy there, that's all fairly easy. Now I want to um, add in the town here, which is Salisbury. So I'm going to come back to my text now and enter Salisbury. So this will be S-A-L-B-U-R-Y. So I'm going to apply that. So we've got the text there down in the bottom left-hand corner. Just going to quickly move that into position there. And I'm going to come now and shift and pick the vector onto which we want to wrap the text. Come to the text on a curve function and apply that. So at the moment you can see that's not quite halfway in between. I know the offset distance needs to be 0.25. So I apply that. Um, this, the actual spacing is not particularly good here. So I'm going to increase the spacing. OK. And I'm happy with that. Close that and ah, I've just noticed actually that I've spelt Salisbury wrong. It shouldn't be two L's, it should be L I. So I'm going to go back in now and edit that text. So I'm going to come in and change that L to an I and apply. And of course, I've gone and lost all the edits that I'd done including the wrapping onto the curve. So I've got to close that back out now, shift and pick up the curve again, come back and do the wrapping onto it and change the spacing and now close that out. So I also have the text for the other side which is the association and at this point we're now going to add some text for the date at the top. So it's going to be a from and to date. So I'm going to come into here and add in uh, this is from 1934 so I apply and of course I need to zoom out because it's probably applied at the bottom left hand corner which it has. So I need to move that up and I'm going to rotate it now which I need to come out of the form to do. So I'm going to take that now and rotate it and try and move it into position. And I've noticed it's too big. OK, so I need to come back to the form now and change its height to be 0.8, for instance, maybe, and apply that. And of course, that's lost the transformation. So I need to come back in now and rotate that again and place that into position. I'm happy with that at that point. Now I want to flip it and have it on the other side and have 2018 written. So I'm going to make a copy of that and and just rotate it. So I'm going to use 9 on the keyboard OK, and just move that one into position. And so I've got the date on the other side. Of course, what I want to do now is just come back into the draw text function and quickly change it from 1934 to 2018. But of course, I've lost the rotation again. So I've got to close that out, come back to the rotation, put it into place 
and then we've completed the sign. So now I'm going to do the same in version 9.5. OK, so we've got the same part in version 9.5 and like we did with version 9 we'll take a look at some of the simple fundamental issues that we have and see whether these have been remedied with version 9.5. And Now I'm going to go to the draw text function and you can immediately see here it's given me a location for where that text is going to start and wherever I click you can see that I've got a text box re representing the text alignment whether that's right center or middle you can see that's being changed dynamically on the screen there and you've got the height so if I change that to say 2 you can see that immediately being updated on the screen and back down to say 1 and you can see that location being placed. So immediately after that, I don't have to come up to the text uh, entry uh, text box, I can simply start typing canoe and we'll see the letters on the screen. Great. So now as we did before, I'm going to just mid flow, which is nice here, I'm going to click on that, scale that down now, okay, I'm happy with that, and then add in ing to create canoeing and as you can see that kept that transformation. Now similarly, if I want to rotate that, what we had to do in version 9 was, was to come out of the uh, text entry because the transformation box there did not have the rotation anchors, but they are now here, so I can just rotate that and maybe come back in and type in kayak. And as you can see there, it's kept the transform the rotation and the scaling. Uh, and similarly with the um, kerning that would also be maintained. So you can see it's a, a big leap forward with the creation and editing of text because typically we don't always get things right first time or quite often we like to use templates for text where we then come in and just update the font or update the uh, the text entry particularly if you're making plaques for instance where you might have uh, sort of template text that's just edited to be different dates or different names so I'm just going to delete that out now and we're going to get rid of that text and come in and look at the sign here itself and going to create the first word which is rowing so I'm going to just plonk that there you can immediately see that that is the wrong height so I'm going to change that to one and I'm going to add uh, rowing into this location and similarly like we did before I'm just going to shift and pick that outer curve and align to the center of that vector now that was simple here and now we're going to add in the word Salisbury into this region here as we did with version 9. So straight into the text I'm just going to say create it down here and I'm going to type in S-A-L-S-B-U-R-Y and close out that form. I'm going to shift now and pick that out of vector, do the text on a curve and we're going to align to the curve, we're going to be on the other side and we need to apply an offset of 0.25 okay and we can now see those that letters but the spacing's not quite right so I'm going to need to increase that up until that is right okay I'm happy with that close that out ah and just like I did with version 9 I've suddenly realized that I've spelt it incorrectly so I'm going to come back in now to the text form and just change that L to an I and that's kept the spacing and it's just replaced the L with an I so that is perfect that saved me a hell of a lot of time so I'm just going to close out that form we'll switch on the other text the other side for association and now I'm going to come up and create my uh, two dates here so simply come in with the text place it somewhere around about here and this is going to be 1934 immediately I can see it's the wrong side height so I'm just going to change that to 0.8 okay and I'm just I mid flow I can actually click on it rotate it just get it into position okay and just apply a bit more rotation okay I'm happy with that now and I'm going to copy that and paste it so control C control V and just use the nine on the keyboard to rotate I'm going to move that now across to here 
OK, and just come back to the draw text function and change that to 2018. And as you can see, we've completed the sign in a much, much shorter time than we could have done with version 9, given the mistakes that we made along the way. Two new image editing functions that have been added to version 9.5 are the ability to crop an image to a vector and to change its color characteristics. In version 9 there was no ability to crop an image and also if we wanted to change the brightness, contrast or gamma there was no way of doing that and we would have to do that in a third party software. This becomes particularly important if you're going to create for instance a lithophane or if you're looking to create a suitable image for maybe creating a laser picture toolpath. So with 9.5 these have been added so we have the ability to change the brightness contrast in gamma as well as obviously change it from gray, uh, from color to grayscale and to add a feathered board around it whether that be rectangular or oval and as stated before this is ideal if you're looking to create a lithophane or looking to create a suitable output for a laser picture toolpath so if we look at the visual differences between the two products in version 9 you had nothing there was no ability to um, crop an image or to change its color characteristics in version 9.5 under the edit objects menu there are two new functions here one for cropping and one for the color change so we can see here in this particular example which we'll go through here we've taken a, an image of a tiger and created a vector around its head which is then cropped to create the uh, trimmed out version we've increased the brightness slightly since it's a dull image changed it to grayscale and then added a nice feathered board around the outside and at that point we're happy to move on to maybe using that for a different purpose so with that the best way to show this is to go into the software so I'm going to open version 9.5 and just create a new file just its width and height of 5 and I'm going to import an image directly into this space uh, we've got a tiger here similar to the one we saw in the PowerPoint and I'm going to create a circle centered somewhere around about there and expanding out okay so I'm happy with that I'm going to close that now and then shift and pick the image okay and then use the crop bitmap which is the new function in the edit objects menu and that will crop the image to the selected vector now I want to then scale that up so I'm going to change its size to be 4 and I'm going to center that using the centering tool here and we have the cropped image of the tiger's head centrally located height and width 4. At that point I do need to uh, want to change some uh, characteristics with the image so next to the crop image crop bitmap icon is the picture editor which brings up the form on the left hand side you can see I can change the contrast I can change the brightness and I can change the gamma okay in this case I'm just going to slightly increase the brightness and I'm going to increase the gamma and at that point I now want to change it to a grayscale image so I'm going to change it to grayscale and given the fact that this is going to be used as a laser picture so I'm going to um, just add a border around that so a feathered edge border so rather than getting a hard edge it's a nice soft edge to the uh, to the effect um, in this case I need an oval border and of course I can change that depending on how much feathering I want so with that I am happy and now I have edited my original color picture of the tiger trimmed it to a vector and applied some changes to its color characteristics ready for another operation later down the line further to the improvements to rotary we've made some big changes to the way we import models and in particular rotary based models in version 9 there was no specific workflow for rotary 
and it was often difficult to orientate the model before beginning the unwrap. But the biggest problem was having to judge the scale of the model in order to fit within the block given the fact that you had to consider the unwrapped dimensions. Now with version 9.5 the import process has been completely rewritten to only display the relevant parameters. You have two options, one for a full 3D uh, model and the other one for a flat base model. Um, there is automatic initial orientation so it will bring the component and orientate it given the um, axis that you've selected for the uh, rotary. Uh, there's a special uh, blue bounding cylinder which helps you um, orientate your model towards the block. There's automatic scaling to fit. A really big plus is the ability to uh, scale the model to fit the block. So this process will calculate the unwrapped dimensions and ensure your model is scaled correctly to fit the block. And it's very easy to uh, manipulate the rotation axis to ensure that runs through the model so that when we unwrap the model, we get exactly what we need. Okay, so the best thing to do now is to show um, both V9 and V9.5 in action. So let's start with version 9. So I've started a new session here and I'm going to start by creating a new part. So we use the gadgets here, gadget wrapping wrap job setup. And we've got a cylinder length of 25, diameter 4, alignment along the y-axis, and my axis is through the center and it's a simple cylindrical wrap. So I'll OK that now and we'll come straight to the modeling and import the model. So I'm going to take the table leg.sdl and as you can see that's been brought in on the screen. We can see the block in the lower left hand corner and the fact that the orientation has not um, happened and uh, is, is come in in its uh, standard position and now we need to orientate it to fit the block. So I'm going to just go through these until we think that we've got something that orientates and happens to be front, okay, so the front um, is aligned with the long axis of my block. I'm happy with that. I'm going to scale it now, so I'm just going to scale it to something in proportion with the block, center it. Now we still need to change the dimension. Now it just so happens that I've done the necessary calculations and I know that I need that my longest y-axis should be 16 so I'm going to apply that now and recenter the model so when this is unwrapped it will fill the um, the x dimension and I now need to manipulate the zero plane to ensure that when it unwraps I get all my model as correct so I'm going to just change the view here and lower the plane or move the model up basically so the plane runs through the model now and I'm now going to OK that. Do I want to unwrap the component? Yes. OK and there we have it presented on the screen. I'm just going to go back to drawing and just change the model color so it always defaults to that color so we're going to go for beach light. OK now at that point um, unfortunately I can't see that rewrapped. I don't have access to that. You only have access to toolpath, toolpath drawing to see the toolpaths once we've actually created them in a wrapped orientation. So I can't see that but I'm now going to progress and add on some extra clip art onto that. So um, with VCarv Pro you can only import one SDL file so if I come back to modeling and try to import a second one for the grapes here I get a message that it only supports a single SDL file. But I can have access to my clip art here so I'm going to go down to clip art and we've got this flower that we've used before. I'm going to bring that in but before I do that I'm just going to go back to the modeling now create a new level okay insert a new level and move that onto that level okay so I'm now going to manipulate this into position so we're going to add some sort of detail at the top of the leg basically so I'm just going to move that and maybe just slightly rotate it a bit more back okay now at that point I now want to mirror it to the other side so I'm going to go across to the drawing tools select the mirror option and I've got flip about job center create mirrored copy flip horizontal okay so we've got those two together and close that now since we can't see the wrap model let's move forward and create the toolpath and we can see the wrap toolpath 
So I'm going to go across to my toolpath tab now and check my block size and then move on to the toolpath. Very simple, just standard 3D finishing toolpath. And I'm going to use the model boundary raster strategy, raster angle 90 degrees with a 0.25 inch ball and calculate. So we can see that toolpath now and if we zoom in you can see the raster strategy over the top of the extra detail that we've been added and uh, of course I can simulate that now but only visualize the flat simulation I can't see the wrapped simulation and in terms of the toolpath uh, this is the only part that I can see wrapped which and in order to wrap you go through the toolpath menu toolpath drawing and we need to remember now which way we need to wrap so it's going to be around the y-axis and there you can see the wrapped toolpath okay so we can't see the wrapped 3d model and we can't see the wrapped simulation we can only see the wrapped toolpath okay so to highlight the improvements let's do the same demonstration in version 9.5 so I'm going to start by creating a new file no need to use the gadget selecting the rotary job type length 25 diameter 4 my cylindrical or my cylinder axis is in the center and we're orientating along the y-axis i.e. rotating the x values and I shall OK that form and go straight to the modeling tab and import my table leg.sdl so initially that's already orientated using front and to get it into the same orientation as the block and I now am aware that the rotation axis as shown by this red line there is not within my model which would lead to an inaccurate wrap so I need to address that now so I'm going to look along the uh, particular view that allows me to then lower that down into the model immediately the bounding box resizes okay based upon that new rotation axis uh, but of course I need to fit this bounding box to the stock so in the lower part of the form here I'm going to say scale model to fit material is a very powerful command here which works out the calculations based upon the unwrapping to ensure my model fits within my block so scale model to fit material uh, of course we do have some extra stock at the end here because um, uh, 25 was specified as the length so I'm actually going to have the block automatically resize and then OK that and we now are presented with the rewrapped model that's been imported of course I can if I want to see that in the unwrapped state this is the top of the leg and this is the bottom of the leg and I can then obviously flip back to the wrapped state so the next stage is really to add on some extra detail uh, before we then move on and create a toolpath. So before doing that I'm going to um, create a new level and within that level we're going to add some clip art. So I'm just going to look down the Z view and go to clip art now and take some the flower that we've seen before in the previous one that we did with version 9 and just going to manipulate this now okay so I'm just going to try and position it as we would like and then we'll mirror it across to the other side okay so that's approximately how I would like it back to the drawing tab now and I'm going to mirror that uh, create a mirrored copy flipping around the job center flip horizontal okay so I'm going to close that now. Now what we need to be aware is because the unwrapping was extremely accurate and completely fills the block, by the nature of me adding extra clip art now, that's going to bust through the top of the block. And of course you can see that now if I go to set my material, it's telling me that my, that my model is too big for my stock. So quite rightly I need to reduce the relief. So I'm just going to go back now to my modeling tab and we can look at the individual bits of clip art which are roughly around about 0.16 in height. So I'm going to now lower my table leg okay, to account for that. So I'm going to put this down to 1.84 okay, and now when I come back to my block 
we are comfortably we have a little bit of room there so essentially what I've done there is a counter for that that we've added the extra clip up onto the table leg so I've needed to reduce that down in order for it to fit within our defined stock size so I'm happy at that stage and I can what's really nice is of course is great to visualize that in full 3d wrap so we can see that clip up that's been added okay and now we can move directly on to create a toolpath so I'm going to go now to let's just un just flatten that out and go back to the 3D finishing now and we've got a 0.25 inch ball model boundary 90 degrees calculate so we're going to see that toolpath created and of course if we want to see that in the wrap view we can see that there. I'm just going to change the material now to um, um, something more representative and preview all those toolpaths. And there we can see the finished, well, in this case with this particular toolpath, the simulation, a full 3D wrap simulation of that toolpath. So we can see both the original wrap model, the wrap toolpath, and the wrap simulation. So a big improvement over version 9. With version 9.5 there's a significant improvement to the way we handle spiral ramp moves between toolpath profiles. Now in version 9 helical ramps were output as a series of straight line moves. Essentially the spiral ramp would be broken into a lot of straight line segments which could create a very very large g-code file. Whereas for 9.5, those ramps are honoured as arcs, so their output, the output is far smaller file, but it does require an updated post-processor. Now the best way to demonstrate these differences is to output a very simple toolpath using the existing post-processor and a new one that's been adapted for the outputting of arcs. So with that I'm going to start version 9.5 and create a new file 5x5 and simply add a simple circle which will be centered on the job and go straight through to machining so the material set up very simple, just thickness 0.2 and we've got our, our clearance heights correct. Moving straight through to the profile toolpath, starting at zero, cut depth 0.1 with a quarter inch end mill. Um, importantly we're going to switch on the ramps to the toolpath and I'm going to go for the spiral option and simply calculate. So if we have a look from the side here you can see the tool is gradually ramping down to the blue toolpath level so you can see that very clear ramped move down to the toolpath profile now if we just simulate that very quickly so you can see that being cut okay and now the next stage is for us to output that using the two different post process so let's close out of that form now and go to the save toolpath function okay and I'm just going now to select the standard G code option so we're just going to go into the you can see here that we've got G code arcs and G code helical arcs so I'm going to select the G code arcs here now and we've got the arcs in inch and I'm going to save that okay so we're going to save it on to the desktop okay and this is going to be called um, no arcs and we'll save that okay and then we're going to take the same toolpath so I'm just going to change the post processes now and to use the helical arcs and we'll save that and we'll put with arcs and we'll just take a look at the difference between those two toolpaths so they've now been saved so I'm going to come across now and just look at the no arcs file okay and we'll just simply open that up into a notepad here and we can simply see that we have an awful lot of entries into there for what is essentially a simple ramp down to a toolpath profile so with that I'm just going to close the no arcs one and we'll look at the with arcs and as you can see there 
it's a far smaller file correctly output with the arcs to produce a far smaller G code file. Within machining there's been some significant improvements in the way we manage rotary jobs. Uh, new for version 9.5 is support for G93 which means that the rotation speed will vary to maintain a constant feed rate therefore you'll get a much better finish quality than you used to do with the no support for G93. Similarly when outputting the file using a rotary post you would be originally prompted in version 9 to enter the diameter of the cylinder and enter whether the zero position on the cylinder was the surface or the center so you'd still have to add that rather than that being automatically extracted. Well that's changed to version 9.5 and those parameters are extracted from the job and written into the header of the uh, g-code file. So with that, let, let's take a look. So I've got a session of VCarve Desktop started here, and I'm going to open an existing model. It's one that we saw earlier. So I'm going to switch across to the simulation there. You can see the Vectric text that's going to be engraved, and if we just quickly simulate that, you can see that. So with that, I'm now going to output that using a rotary post. So I'm going to save that toolpath there, and here we're going to be using... Um, uh, a, a wrapped post which is wrapping the y-axis to the A which is exactly what we want since this is aligned to the x-axis so we're going to be wrapping the y values so I'm going to save that toolpath now and I'm going to simply call that um, y to A so y to A and we'll save that onto the desktop and then I'm just going to pop open that text file now and we can see at the top is specified the length We've also got the um, uh, radius and, of course, the diameter there. So you can see that those values have all been entered into the top of the header for the G-code file automatically rather than the manual entry of V9. So for VCarve desktop users, it's a much more simple process to what people have been used to with VCarve Pro and Aspire in the past. Okay, so let's finish by taking a summary look at all the new features that have been added to VCar Pro version 9.5. Right the way from the infrastructure changes that allow us to automatically download and enter our license code to get our software working if we're connected to a customer account. A much better way of managing clip art, i.e. to download it only where, as and when required. The huge change which is the addition of the new rotary job type and the related changes both to the workflow and the way we are displaying models. Improvements within drawing for text creation and editing as well as the new picture editor. And finally the, uh, the ability to crop a bitmap. Uh, to a vector. Within modeling we have a, a much better way of importing uh, rotary based models and flat based models as well as support for the wrap model to be exported as a wrapped entity. Within machining we've got a couple of key improvements to the way we are managing uh, rotary toolpaths as well as the support for arcs within helical ramps which should dramatically reduce the size of some g-code files. Overall, I think this represents a big improvement for 9.5 and a great selection of new features that have been added.